Useless. Chief Mate Juza's breaking in the newcomers, but I think we can spare you the tedium of that. After this, the new crew members will be arranged into two teams for more specialized training, according to their own aptitudes and the needs of the fleet. One team will learn comprehensive survival skills, including maritime emergency rescue, marine meteorology, psychological counseling, and so on. They will serve as the support team for the fleet, ensuring safe navigation. That's why we call them the Shield of the Crux. <laughs> That's right. You catch on quick. As one might expect, we call the other team the Spear of the Crux, because they'll be learning about naval warfare. They'll make up the armed portion of our crew. Also, they're responsible for handling the fleet's cargo deals. So, what do you think? Which team is for you? <laughs> As I expected, you have a will to protect others. There are two main subjects that the Shield of the Crux focuses on. Survival knowledge and entertainment. As I was saying earlier, survival knowledge includes prevention of injuries and diseases at sea, navigation and cartography, basic meteorology, etc. You can go learn about these skills from Yinxing, Hoixing, and Liu They're all seasoned hands in their respective fields. Each sailor has their own strengths and weaknesses. I'm no rookie, of course, but you shouldn't underestimate the knowledge of the crew. If there's anything I'm most proud of in the fleet, it's my people. Go and get to work. I'll have some questions to test you later. <laughs> Hello, Traveler. I'm Yinxing, the Crux's surgeon at sea. Whenever a sailor has a health problem, they come to me. I deal with it all, from seasickness and common colds to amputations and everything in between. Oh, I presume the captain arranged this, correct? All right then, let's begin. But first of all, let me ask you this. What do you think is the biggest danger that all new crew members face? Hmm, that can certainly be a problem at sea, but it's not the biggest danger. The most dangerous thing for a newcomer is to underestimate the dangers of life at sea. Oh, I have seen many new crew members who see themselves as young and fighting fit and have no regard for safety. They think that since they are tough enough to look after themselves on land, they'll be fine at sea as well. Those are the ones that always end up in the sick bay. Everyone should know that being a sailor, especially on a long voyage, is a brutal job in an unforgiving environment. We have to face malnutrition when we're short on supplies, all kinds of injuries and diseases that the harsh ocean weather can bring, and even the psychological problems that can arise due to isolation and the lack of entertainment. To make things worse, the lack of medication and treatment options at sea can result in even minor health problems becoming serious, or even fatal. Oh, you probably thought I was joking, right? Well, that's not surprising. Most newcomers think the same way. But hopefully you now realize that with a little extra precaution, a lot of these things can be avoided. Well, I think that's enough for you to think over for now. Is there anything else you would like to know? Captain Beto? Well, out of everyone I've met, she probably values people's lives and safety the most. Although I'm just a doctor, Beto has given me the full authority to send any newcomers who I don't see as fit for service off the ship until they are ready to come back with the right attitude. Every time we're stocking up before a voyage, medicine takes top priority. 
I'm even allowed to choose the suppliers, regardless of the price. We have adequate budget for medical expenses. Do you know what Mora Grubber, our bookkeeper, calls this? A significant financial risk. <laughs> but Beto knows the importance of having a healthy crew. That's why she has authorized me regardless. She places her full trust in me and believes that I can solve these problems. Of course, I have proven her right. So, to answer your question, that's how she thinks. Is there anything else you would like to know? Hmm. Huh. Are you concerned about them? No wonder Captain Beto thinks you're different. There must be more to you than just your strength. If you can convince Mora Grubber to show you the books, you'll see there is a regular fixed cost titled Convalescence Payments and Incapacity Support for Injured Crew Members. Regardless of the fleet's income, those who have fought alongside us will certainly receive their compensation every year. Some of those that have returned to land have started small businesses, while others have chosen to go out traveling the world. The money is intended to allow them to live their lives as freely as possible. I'm sure being based on land helps a lot with that too. Still, we can't pretend like it solves everything. They call them life-changing injuries for a reason, you know. But if nothing else, it's good to know that while Captain Beto is in charge of the Crux, no one will get forgotten. Is there anything else you would like to know? Well, <laughs> my pleasure. Okay, let's leave it there then. Be sure to take good care of your health. Sorry about earlier, Traveler. We were so caught up on getting you to join the fleet that we didn't notice we were going a little overboard. Good thing the captain stepped in. Oh! Well, in that case, you have come to the right person. I'm not just blowing smoke. You're looking at the most talented navigator in Liyue Harbor. I'll start by introducing some chart reading essentials for new sailors. Feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. Let's start with what to look for when you get a set of complicated charts. First, you should always look at any indicated shorelines, islands or reefs, water depths, hydrological conditions, and other hazards. With these features in mind, you can answer the basic question of, can I chart a safe course through this area? Visually, nautical charts are a little unique. Unlike land maps, most charts do not have a fixed scale, which means that it can be hard to precisely determine the exact distance between two points. The most advanced nautical charts come with a supplementary chart, which has different colored lines marked on it to indicate distances. It's worth mentioning that under my direction, the crux is using these advanced kinds of charts. Some cartographers mark out other points of interest on their charts, usually with their own special symbols. If they don't leave any accompanying notes, they can be very difficult to interpret. <laughs> Not only those, we have tattered and torn charts that we've picked up from all over the place. To be honest, it can be quite a challenge, even for me. Some of these charts are really old and have symbols that I've never seen before. But if we don't decipher them, we will certainly miss many secrets of the sea. Fortunately, we have the captain with us. She managed to find some ancient books on semiotics that I can use to study the charts further. I don't think anyone other than our captain can manage to get these kinds of resources. Old charts and ancient books on semiotics are not the kinds of things that are sold in your average marketplace. Oops, I've gotten off topic. <laughs> well, that just about covers the basics of chart reading. Is there anything else you would like to know, Traveler? Drafting charts? That's certainly a more advanced topic. To be honest, I've only attained a smattering of knowledge in that area. The charts we are using now are just revised versions of the ones left by the previous navigator. So my mapping experiences have been primarily limited to updating our charts to reflect changes in the sea. I think you can ask Captain Beto more about cartography. One time, the fleet sailed into an uncharted area by mistake. It wasn't long before we turned the fleet around and returned the way we came out for fear of potential hazards. But Captain Beto still managed to draft a simple chart of the area we sailed through for if and when we explore the area again. Incredible, isn't it? 
I was amazed to see that the captain could even do cartography. Because I have the talent, and she doesn't want to let it go to waste. <laughs> she treats the whole crew that way. I initially had the same question myself. After all, in many fleets, the captain also works as a navigator. I couldn't understand her reasoning at the time, so I asked her. She just laughed and told me to wise up, saying that even Rex Lapis never fights alone. She wants everyone on board to master their role, so that the crux is not floating on her alone. That way, if the day ever comes when she's no longer with the fleet, we will still be able to sail onward without her. Captain Beto may seem aloof and even act careless sometimes, but the truth is that she's very considerate of everyone on board. Is there anything else you would like to know, Traveler? My pleasure. A friend of Captain Beto is a friend of mine. Hmm. I wonder what's going on. Hello, Traveler. Are you here to learn about marine meteorology? <laughs> In my line of work, I've got to have a pair of sharp eyes. I saw the captain showing you around the training grounds, and then you went to see Yingxing and Huixing. So I figured that she probably wants you to get to know the life of a crew member. <laughs> okay, let's get started. First, I'll introduce you to the basics of meteorology. Marine meteorology basically means keeping tabs on the weather as well as other ocean phenomena, so things like sea fog, storm surges, water spouts, and so on. These are all potential threats to safe navigation. Luckily, whatever weather might be coming up, there's always some kind of sign that gives it away in advance. Take water spouts, for example. They're caused by high-speed rotating winds on the surface of the ocean. They can engulf large ships and do immense damage. But if you know that water spouts can only form in an environment with high temperature, high humidity, and large clouds, then you can be well prepared. You will be even more alert if you also know that the presence of winds blowing in opposite directions, with a significant difference in speed, is a direct precursor to the formation of water spouts. And most importantly, if you spot a small white vortex emerging from the clouds, you should immediately notify the crew to steer clear of what's ahead. So there you go. Those are the warning signs of water spouts. I am proud to say that over the years, I haven't let a single one sneak up on my watch. Well, I'm good at reading the sea, but I'm not as good as the captain when it comes to reading people. Do you know the small fishing village next to Wang Shuin? I heard that when Captain was a kid, she worked there fishing with the adults. Later, she made her way to the harbor where she struggled to make a living. <laughs> Managing to survive in an environment like that as a kid? is solid proof of the captain's capabilities. If it wasn't for her, I never would have dreamed of taking this job. She gave me confidence and told me I could do it. You may not have heard, but I'm best known outside the Crux fleet for a slightly infamous story involving me, third round knockout, and a few too many. Who would ever have thought that the rookie sailor who fell drunk into the sea and became a laughingstock among their now former crewmates would then go on to become a lookout for the crux, but it's the unbelievable truth. <laughs> it proves that having skills alone is not enough. You need someone like the captain who is a good judge of character. Find me anytime if you want to know more. So you've already finished talking to the crew, huh? <laughs> I thought it would take you a while longer. So, what did you think? Well, you sound confident, but don't underestimate the shield of the crux. Gotta admit, though, I like your attitude, kid. Okay, let's get started. 
First of all, life on the sea isn't always plain sailing. Injuries and illnesses happen all the time. But what is the single biggest danger facing crew members? Hmm? Is that your final answer? <laughs> all right, on to the second question. As you've just learned, the fleet plots its route using nautical charts. The charts used by the Crux have additional charts attached. The supplementary chart has lots of lines in various colors for added reference. What is the purpose of these lines? Okay, interesting, interesting. Now, last question. On longer voyages, we have to be especially careful to avoid certain weather hazards that pose a threat to the integrity of the ship and the lives of the crew. For example, water spouts. So my question is, how can we reliably predict water spouts so we can avoid them? Okay, those are all my questions. Do you want to know how you did? <laughs> I gotta say, each time I think I've wrapped my head around how great you are, you surprise me with something new. You got them all correct. They weren't the most difficult questions, but they weren't ones you could bluff your way through either. You've clearly been paying attention to my crew. Okay then, now it's time to apply that endless talent of yours to learning some new recreational activities. You need to realize that being out at sea might be fun for the first few days while everything's new, but before too long, looking at the same old sea every day and being so isolated from everything can really cause people to struggle mentally. That is why regular recreational activities are an absolute necessity. We offer a lot of fun courses for our newcomer training, including fishing, photography, chess, Oh, and thanks to Kazuha, these days we also offer poetry and music appreciation, as well as communal wind listening. Each newcomer has to participate in at least one, so that they've got some way of keeping themselves occupied at sea further down the line. Of course, if you'd prefer wrestling sea monsters with your bare hands, that can be arranged. <laughs> Well, for today, at least, let's stick to the training schedule drawn up by Juza. If I remember correctly, it should be photography today. Come on, I'll show you. Listen up! Everyone can go back and call it a day. The photography session has been postponed. What's going on here, Juza? Oh, Captain, there you are. Well, Captain, the photography teacher just sent word saying that she's fallen ill and doesn't want to risk coming in in case she keels over in class. I see. That's quite unfortunate. Oh? <laughs> quite the multi-talented one, aren't you? In that case, why don't you help us out and lead the class today? Yeah, unfortunately, the original teacher canceled at short notice, so there's no time to schedule anything else instead. It would be great if the Traveler could step in as the teacher for the day. It's up to you, Traveler. Great, it's settled then. Juza, let's muster everyone over here to meet the new teacher. Yes, Captain. Okay, that's one... That should be everyone. Take it away, Traveler. Oh yeah? What's that? Fair enough. It seems like you already have someone in mind. So, who will it be? Me? <laughs> well, well, we could do that, or... Guyanstone Forest looks extraordinary today. It'd be a pity to not capture the scenery for posterity. So how about we snap Guyanstone Forest for today's class? Then there'd be no need for a model. <laughs> Come on, Captain. We talked about this. The photography class is supposed to be portrait photography. Have you forgotten? Scenery looks nice at first, but it gets boring after a while. I bet it'd keep the crew more entertained if we got them learning portrait photography so they could record moments in each other's daily lives. Those were your exact words, Captain. <laughs> Where are they now? <laughs> Strange, I don't seem to remember anything about that. Well, then in that case, how about Huixing? I bet she's perfect for the camera. Or Fuzhong, 
or Mora Grubber, even Little Yue. Seriously, Captain? Little Yue? You're just trying to wriggle your way out of this. This isn't like you. You are the captain after all. Of all of us, you're the best suited to being a model. I agree. You were the one who invited the Traveler to be the teacher, so you should cooperate, Captain. Besides, Captain, you've never had your photo taken. It's high time you got one. You know, a heroic and striking kind of picture. We can even use it to promote the fleet during recruitment. <laughs> Real funny, guys. Well, if you say so. I'm not one to spoil the fun. <sighs> so, what do I do now, Traveler? Uh, huh. uh like this? <laughs> You're kidding, right? I've never had my photo taken before, but something this simple shouldn't be a challenge for me. It must be the lighting or something. You've got it wrong. And... <clears throat> I never said that. You mean, go somewhere else than bring the final photo back as teaching material? Sounds good to me. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it, guys? Hmm. The lighting may still be a problem. But I'm open to persuasion. If you have a suitable place in mind, I can consider it. Just to be clear, I won't necessarily agree. It depends on the place you have in mind. The fishing village near Wangshu Inn? That place is deserted now, isn't it? How do you even know that place anyway? It's tiny. I don't think I've ever seen it on a single map. <laughs> Treasure? There? I guess I missed out on that one. It just so happens that that little village is where I grew up. Now that you've mentioned it, it's given me the urge to go back and take a look around. How about we take this opportunity to pay my old home a visit? Certainly seen better days. It was never that impressive, but at least back in the day, it was a lively village and home to several families. I wonder how long these last few old houses will remain standing. Nothing as dramatic as you might think. A few small incidents occurred, and then people began to leave. Come on, let's take a walk around. People used to call this place Downriver because the villagers apparently moved here from a place called Upriver. With them, they brought their knowledge of fishing, which had been passed down from generation to generation. I learned a lot from them when I was here. Now Upriver is long gone, and Downriver is all but deserted. It won't be long before no one even remembers what these places are called. To Zhong. Zhong? Hmm. I barely remember this name. You're right. I was only about five or six years old when I first arrived here. I was homeless and had to wander around the streets. I remember finally managing to find half a rice bun, but then a stray dog jumped out and snatched it away from me. Half a rice bun was not something I was willing to give up so easily at the time, so I chased it all the way to this neighborhood. Then a few fishermen saw us running and stopped me. They were kind enough to give me some food. Seeing me stop, the dog also stopped running. 
but straight away it keeled over and never got up again. Maybe it was too tired, or maybe it had starved to death. I went over and saw that the dog still had the half rice bun in its mouth. It didn't let go even at the very end. <sighs> Poor thing. Had I known the dog was so weak, I would have let it take that half rice bun. I could tell they were wary of me at first. I was the dirty little kid who had just chased a dog to death over some scraps of food. But I got lucky. The village chief took pity on me and brought me to their home. That's how I ended up staying here. <laughs> Do you know what the name Beto means? <laughs> Come on, I'll explain along the way. About a year or two after I arrived, the village chief fell ill during the winter and passed away. During that same period, the harvest was getting worse and the fisherman's catch was getting smaller day by day. Without the village chief to handle the situation, people began blaming each other. There were even rumors that some families had been overfishing and leaving nothing for the rest of the village to catch. But in the end, they all turned on me, saying that they shouldn't have ever taken me in. They said I was bad luck. They pointed to how that dog died on the first day I arrived. Next thing you know, the village chief dies, and then all the fish die out. They said I was a living curse, and the downfall of the village was all my fault. I told them that I didn't understand. I'm not a curse, I'm just Beto. Then some of the villagers started shouting, and drove me out of the village. They shouted, Nando controls life. Beto controls death. Beto controls death. Before then, all I knew about my name was that it had something to do with the stars. It wasn't until then that I realized that Beto was a constellation. And the Alcor, one of its stars, was an omen of death. Here we are. This is the old house of the village, Chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> Is that all? And let me guess, you got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed, and the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, you'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. <laughs> Two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time, I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, do I need to strike a pose? All right, how about this? So, is it done yet? Please don't tell me that it looks weird. Show me. Yeah, sure, whatever. Now give it here. Hmm, yeah. 
Yes. I see. All right. On behalf of the Crux, thank you very much for your photography class today. You've been an excellent teacher, and I couldn't be more satisfied. Now, as Captain of the Crux, I am exercising my official right to requisition this photograph for future promotion and recruitment purposes. <laughs> so I'm afraid I'll be holding on to this. That's fine with you though, right? <laughs> Here we are. This is the old house of the village chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> is that all? And let me guess, you got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed, and the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, you'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. <laughs> Two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time, I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, do I need to strike a pose? What? The nerve! What do you think this is? I don't want to do this whole modeling thing. Hey, cut it out! No more pictures! I just came up with an awesome new riff. Want to hear it? So after we dropped you off in Rito, we found a shipwreck nearby. Probably belonged to Inazuman pirates. We searched the wreckage and found a map. At first, I thought it was a nautical chart. I was thinking we might discover a new sailing route if we were lucky. But after a closer look, I realized it wasn't a map of the sea at all. It was a Liyue treasure map, and no ordinary one at that. 
Um, nothing like that. I just mean that the map was a mess. So it was the most I could do to figure out that the treasure was probably in Lyra. As for its exact location, I have no idea. I'd say I've explored Liwa pretty extensively, but still, this one managed to beat me. So, I thought of you. Nobody can beat you when it comes to treasure hunting on land, right? Is that right? <laughs> well then, it looks like I'm in good hands. Here's the map, see what you can make of it. So, where do you think it is? Gwaley Plains. Huh, I never would have gotten that. How can you tell? Oh, okay then. So you do live up to the hype. <laughs> I can't believe you noticed that. You sure have an eye for detail. Let's head over there and take a look. I'll need you to help me zero in on the specific location once we're there. It should be around here, right? Hmm? Who are they? Oh, it's a bunch of treasure hoarders. <laughs> I guess the treasure's for real, then. There are quite a few of them. If things go south and fists start flying, stay behind me. I'm more than a match for these amateurs. Keep digging, boys! Once we have our hands on the treasure, everyone gets a share! You can all hold it right there! Huh? Who's that barking orders? Do you know who you're up against here? Keep going if you got a death wish! Uh, what the? It's... it's... C -C -C captain B -B Beto! Run, boys! Run! Nobody move! Uh, captain Beto, Lord of the Ocean! This is all my fault. I didn't know who I was up against. I, I don't have a death wish. I swear. I got a big mouth is all. It's always saying things it shouldn't. I swear I'll wash it out with soap the moment I get back. Please, have mercy. Will you spare us? <laughs> <sighs> well, spare them, at least. These guys are just trying to put food in their mouths. They'd never hurt a soul. If you need to take anyone, take me. Please, let them go! It was me that disrespected you. They never did, and never would. Is that right? Fine. Seems like you've got a heart in there somewhere, seeing how you treat your crew. I'll let you off the hook this time. Get out of here! Thank you, Captain Beto. Thank you. Wait. Yes? What else might the merciful and mighty Beto require? This treasure's still up for grabs. The Crux Fleet honors the rule of first come, first served. You found it first, so name your price. I can't have any rumors going around about Captain Beto stealing other people's treasure, can I? Captain Beto, we wouldn't dare take Mora from you. D take the treasure as an apology for my foolish words. Please, take it, please. Oh, well, if you insist. I accept your kind offer and I'll make you one in return. You don't seem like terrible folks, so let me help you get onto the right track. If you want to mend your ways and put all this behind you, the Crux can probably arrange some odd jobs in the port for you. It'd be humble work, but at least it'd get you on your feet and making an honest living. A much better deal than what you've got going now, if you ask me. Wow, uh, thank you, Captain Beto. 
on behalf of me and all my boys. Right. <laughs> Let's see what we've got in here. <sighs> this isn't what we're looking for. Let's look around. Maybe we'll find it. Those rocks look... kind of weird. Let's see if there's anything there. Absorption test! Yeah. Nothing. <sighs> Let's keep looking. What are those hilly trolls digging for? Wait, actually, I've heard they sometimes dig for buried treasure. Let's go take a closer look. Four! Useless! Evil conquering! Worthless! Keep! Nope, not here either. <sighs> now that we've searched all the places of interest in this area and come up with nothing, well, you got any ideas? It's a... Uh... Captain Beto! Captain Beto! Huh? Hey, what brings you back here? Captain Beto! Actually, we've just been wandering around nearby. We didn't go far, because we were thinking about what you said and... Well, me and the boys decided... We're ready to move away from all of this, and get on the straight and narrow! Oh? Are you sure? Yes. Absolutely sure. Okay then. But I'll warn you right now, you won't have it easy. It might just be menial work in the port, but in the eyes of the general public, you'll be associates of the Crux. So there'll be a grueling test you have to go through before you can start. I understand, I understand. Truth be told, Captain, it's only because it's you. The mighty and honorable Captain Beto. If it had been anyone else, I don't think I'd have listened. And since you made us this kind offer, I'd like to ask, if I might be so bold, is there any hope at all for us to become full members of the Crux in the future? Even the tiniest shred of hope? Hmm. <laughs> well, there's no place in the Crux for delusions of grandeur, that's for sure. But, then again, everybody has to start somewhere. So, it comes down to you. If you manage to impress me and earn the respect of my crew, then, yeah, nothing's impossible. Uh, thank you, Captain Beto. Thank you a thousand times over. I couldn't help but notice you were searching for something else. It still hasn't turned up? Why? Do you have any clues? We heard about two treasures, both in Gwaley Plains. We were still looking for the first one when you found us. So, maybe the other one might be what you're looking for. Not too far from here, but I'm just not sure of the exact location. All the info we got about this treasure came from the black market. The answer's hidden inside a poem which goes like this. <clears throat> Drunkenly I gazed at the ruins long forsaken, and lay beneath red leaves whose branches cast a crooked shade. The dusk sun shone upon the sea as I awakened, but Guyan stood twixt weary eyes and the sight of home they craved. As for the ruins long forsaken part, I do know of some ruins near here. But beyond that line, I just... I don't... <sighs> I'm just not smart enough. <laughs> so a treasure clue hidden in a poem, huh? Don't worry, we got this. See my friend here? If they taught treasure hunting as an art form, you'd probably be calling her Grandmaster. This kind of thing's a piece of cake for her. Am I right? <laughs> okay, then. Let's start by heading to the site and surveying the scene. Maybe we'll find some other clues over there. Uh, okay. Come on, boys. You heard the captain. Lead the way.
These are the long forsaken ruins from the poem. Apparently they were once full of treasure. But judging by the state of them now, it's probably long gone. Hmm, it seems that we need to dig deeper into this poem. Drunkenly, I gazed at the ruins long forsaken, and lay beneath red leaves whose branches cast a crooked shade. The dusk sun shone upon the sea as I awakened, but Guyan stood twixt weary eyes and the sight of home they crave. <sighs> Do you have any ideas? Ah, somewhere you can see the ruins from. So, somewhere not too far from here? Yeah, and maybe the shadow cast by the tree is supposed to hint at something. Oh, I got And the shadow of a red leaf. Let's take a look around. I think we're getting close. At long last, the treasure is finally in our hands. A check from the Northland Bank. You really came through. We found the spot in no time. Without your help, I don't think I ever would have gotten my hands on it. Not much, but enough for an average person to survive on for a while. But there's more to this particular check than that. When I found the treasure map, it was tightly sealed inside a small bottle along with a letter. I'll let you read it for yourself. Finished? Yeah, I can't fault him for what he did, but the way things turned out... All I can say is, life is unpredictable. Well, let's fulfill his final wish by taking this check to where it belongs. Well, this is it. Oh boys, it's time for your first job. Give this check to the old lady who lives in that wooden hut. Tell her it's a welfare payment from the Liyue Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, boss. What's up? <laughs> I see, but you only find soccer blooms in certain places, right? It must have been quite a bit of work collecting all these, surely. Let's just pick one, huh? One's enough to show that you care. You've already helped me out so much today. Okay, off you go then. Take her the Sakura Bloom along with the check. And if she asks, tell her, your child in a faraway land sends his best wishes. What? 